Welcome everyone. Welcome back to our message and our service from the Loft Wesleyan Church. We're so glad you joined us. It's a uh, 4th of July weekend. What a special time. And the weather indicates that we're right on time. <laughs> it's hot here today. It's going to be in the mid-90s, but uh, that's all right. It's supposed to be, as my mother used to tell me. It's supposed to be. Well, it's a great time to be with you and uh, a great time to preach a message that is inspirational, hopefully, patriotic for sure, biblical, yes, always must be. So we'll get to that in a little while. Let me first offer prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this observance, and it's very biblical as it was in the Old Testament where God had the Jews put up memorials, whether it was a bad situation for them or a good memory for them to embrace, they were told to build memorials all over the place. Unfortunately, Lord, so many memorials are being torn down in our country. They have a lot to teach, whether good or bad. We should have left them up. But nevertheless, we have what we have. And I pray, Father, that uh, you will help us to realize your part in our country's history. That is encouraging. That gives us hope because we've seen it in the past and we can see it in the future. So may everyone listening believe that their only hope we have for this country, for this world, is Jesus Christ, the hope of glory. He is the blessed hope and the only God, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And we pray in his name. Amen. Well, we have a song by Kelly. Kelly is going to sing a song that's patriotic. My country, tis of thee. But listen to this. You know it. Sing along with her. My country, tis of thee, sweet land of liberty, of thee I sing. Land where my fathers died, land of the pilgrims' pride, from every mountainside, let freedom my native country, the land of the noble free, thy name I love. I love thy rocks and rills, thy woods and temples, hills, my heart with rapture thrills. Let music swell the breeze and ring from all the trees, sweet freedom song. Let Thank you. 
I guess we still are the land of liberty, are we not? That took a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, and it may yet. But we thank God we live in a land with so many freedoms. Amen. Well, by the way, if you are in the area of Hillsboro, we're going to have our live Sunday service. And that's going to be this, uh, Ju what is it, July 5th, 10.30 a.m., here on our property under what I call the Great Tree. And it's at 121 South Branch Road. You can come and stay in your car or you can be seated. We, ha we allow both provisions and we make sure that we uh, keep to all of the um, different uh, suggestions or I, I think they're more stronger than a suggestion. We really believe that we should practice social distancing, wear the mask when when needed, and also uh, make sure that we do not have contact with one another. So do that. Come to our property any Sunday morning. We're going to do that throughout the summer, I believe. And uh, we thank the Lord that we have the property to do it. Also, if you'd like to give an offering by way of uh, the Internet, you can go on to our website, that is theloftwc.org. Theloftwc.org. Go to the giving tab and then follow the instructions. Very safe and secure. And uh, by the way, you, you can give, of course, if you're a member, you're expected to. If you're not, you should give to your own church. Uh, and then if you don't have a church, we accept your a donation for sure. Also, you can give by sending your check to the address I gave you before, 121 South Branch Road, Hillsboro, New Jersey, 08844. All right, we're um, going to have the message now, and I'm excited about this. I've taken the, uh, us to the text of Psalm 2. This is a Psalm of David. And he's inspired, of course, by the Lord as he shares this with all of us. It applies today as much as it applied in what? He, he lived about 1000 B.C. So for 3000 years, this text is pertinent. Is uh, very convicting, especially with what we're going through right now. Let me read it. Why do the nations rage? Is that not happening? And the people plot a vain thing. The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against His anointed, as a capital A, which means Jesus Christ. You'll see that in a moment. Saying, let us break their bonds in pieces and cast away their cords from us. Ah, I like this part. He who sits in the heavens shall laugh. I don't know if that's the only place in the Bible where it says God laughed. And he laughed at our wickedness in a sense that we think we have everything in control, we don't need him. It's so preposterous to him. It's so foolish to him. So he, he's, he, he probably just shakes his head. But here it says that he laughs. And he who sits in the heavens shall laugh. The Lord will hold them in derision. Confusion. That's happening right now, is it not? Then he shall speak to them in his wrath. Is that happening now? Well, it hasn't been pleasant throughout the world, has it? A lot of people are dying. And distress them in his deep pleasure, or displeasure rather. He goes on, Yet I have set my king, David says, on my holy hill in Zion. He helped build that tabernacle, you know. And he's the one that brought the ark of the covenant to Jerusalem. But he, has, he says, I have set my king on my holy hill in Jerusalem. Of course, no tabernacle can contain God. I will declare the decree 
The Lord has said to me, you are my son, capital S, S-O-N. You are my son. Today I have begotten you. Ask of me and I will give you the nations for your inheritance. Jesus shall reign. And the ends of the earth for your possession. He shall break them with a rod iron, a rod of iron. You shall dash them to pieces like potter's vessel. Now therefore, be wise, O kings. Be instructed, you judges of the earth. Serve the Lord with fear and rejoice with trembling. Kiss the Son, lest he be angry and you perish in your way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are those who put their trust in him. Praise God. Now our text today is refreshing. God's going to settle the score. He's going to deal with the nations. He's going to have his way. He is sovereign. And if anyone thinks that he's not, let me take you back to the place where it says, God will laugh at you. We don't want that to happen because after that there's horrible uh, tribulation. But it is refreshing. We, we are living in trying times. And we as Christians must view all things with God's perspective, or we're simply not going to make it, at least not in a healthy way. Yes, I am a Christian patriot, and I'm so glad I am. I am a Christian who recognizes the hand of God in our nation's history, and hopefully in our future existence. To know American history, by the way, is essential. And I'm not talking about the revisionist history that they're teaching in most of our schools today. I'm talking about our traditional history that many of you grew up with and that I grew up with. We have not had a perfect history. A lot of flaws, a lot of sin, for sure. But even that was a thing that God used to teach us a lesson and to correct in, in our society as much as we have allowed him to. So it's essential to know American history. If we do not have a connection with our past, we will not have a passion and the fight and the courage for the future. I believe that's probably why a lot of the enemies of God are trying to destroy our history. Wipe it from the pages of the book. Yeah, well, let them keep trying. It's not gonna, they're not going to get very far. May God raise up tremendous leaders uh, that are so lacking in the world today and in our country. I have to tell you, I am very confused at this. I'm, I think that some of our leaders have lost their minds. I really have. Here we have the, the crime, war. just to, to give you, I think I did this last Sunday, I'll, I'll, I'll give this illustration again. It's the most obvious. Our crime rate in most of our cities has is well, is risen well above 100%, some 200% and more, and yet they want to do away with policemen. See, that's how they're thinking. It's backwards thinking. And I think it, the Bible, where it says that God will turn them over to a reprobate mind, here it uses the word derision, confusion, they can't think properly. They're not able to think properly. And that's sad. That's really sad. But as Christians, we can. As Christians, we believe that it is righteousness. And I'll get into this. Righteousness that exalts a nation, but sin is a reproach to any people. Somebody out there listening say amen. We also believe, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. I'm quoting scriptures to you. We also must be reminded that if the foundation of our very creation is destroyed, what can the righteous do? Now, I was born uh, when our country was probably at the, 
very peak of its international fame, its pros the prosperity, our, our power was great. Everything was going so wonderfully in our country. And they were the glory days. I'm talking about in the 50s and the early 60s. They were the glory days. But the glory days, where have they gone to? We sometimes forget that every empire or nation that has ever existed experiences the rise and the fall, their fall, and we are not exempt. We are not. Think about it. Every nation, including Israel, has had their rise and fall. In Israel's case, it has risen again. How can we be exempt from all the other nations of the world? We cannot be. Let me give you this. I've given it to my church a few years back, and I think it, it's right on target. Nations rise, write this down if you can, from bondage to spiritual liberty. Talking about their birth, right? Nations rise from bondage to spiritual birth, uh, spiritual liberty. That happened, that first happened in 1620. Jamestown in 1607 was not found, founded for religious principles, but Plymouth was. So 1620 and several of the other colonies followed suit. For the same reason, spiritual liberty. And then we went from spiritual liberty to great courage. And that took place, of course, in 1776, when we defeated the British and, and got our independence from Great Britain. And then from great courage to expansion. When did that happen? Probably Daniel Boone going through the Cumberland Gap in 1795. By the way, I, I found out recently some of my relatives or ancestors <laughs> knew him and uh, went with him eventually. There were several groups that went through the Cumberland Gap, but it started in 1795. Then from, uh, let's see, expansion, going through the Gap, by the way, all the way to the West Coast, and then later including Alaska, from expansion to abundance. The, the 1800s, the Industrial Res Revolution that took place. And so I have 1890s, because those were the, the they called, we called them the gay 90s, the wonderful 1890s. And then from abundance to greed. Yes, when did that happen? Probably the 1920s that peaked. Abundance to greed. The roaring 20s. Began 1929, of course, the start of the Great Depression. That's where greed will get you. And then from greed to indifference. When did that happen? Probably in the 1960s. A lot that's going on now in our streets went on back then in the 1960s. I know, I, I saw it firsthand. In fact, I took part in it. And then from indifference to entitlement. In other words, the attitude that the, the, this country owes me something, or others owe me something, probably started in a big way in the 1970s. And then from entitlement, back to bondage again. When did that happen? Well. You put a date on that. You might put 2020. I don't know, but it's a dangerous time that we're living in. Now, unlike the doomsayers, however, I believe there is hope for America. We must remember, <coughs> however, that we cannot be made well unless we first realize that we are alien. We must individually examine our own hearts when it comes to our indifference and backslidden condition from the Lord. C. Toby said this, the things that are wrong with our country today are the sum total of the things that are wrong with all of us as individuals. I believe that's true. 
So many of us have become desensitized in recent years. Desensitized and even accommodating to the gradual decay of Christian values in our country. Yes. Where we no longer are affected, even accommodating uh, to our uh, social and moral and spiritual decline, it's obvious we're experiencing that right now. We are no longer the conscience of our community. How can we be the conscience of our community when we ourselves have hardened our own consciences? Charles Finney said, God will bless or curse a nation according to the course that Christians take in any society. Well, God meant us to be the light that exposes darkness. So what are we? Are we agnostic? I'm talking about generally speaking. Are we secular? Are we a mixture of a hodgepodge of many faiths? Faiths? Well, still, if you take a poll, I understand that 75% of our population will still claim to be Christian. It says in Psalm 33, 12, and remember this, Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. I, I believe that is true at any time in history. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord of the Bible. The God of the Bible. General Omar Bradley reflects here. He says, We have grasped the, the mystery of the Adam and rejected the Sermon on the Mount. That's foolish. We have achieved brilliance without conscience. That's foolish. We are a nuclear giant and an ethical infant. That's Foolish. So where are we headed? Where are we headed? The colonists, back to them, came here primarily for religious freedom. And what do we do today? Many are attacking religious freedoms. Now how does that make any sense? We fought the Civil War to abolish slavery. And yet, we're engaged in somewhat of a civil war, enslaved by so many other things and people. So, where's the hope? Where's the hope? Psalm 114, 34. Righteousness exalts a nation. So the question is, how can we practice righteousness? We must start with our commitment to 2 Chronicles 7.14. I've mentioned that a lot during the pandemic. 2 Chronicles 7.14 where it says, If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. So what is it to humble ourselves? To realize that God is God and we are not. And that is pertaining also to our own individual life. Of course, humble yourselves before the mighty God and he will exalt you in due time. What is it to seek his face? That means to repent of our wicked ways. That means to pray, get on our knees, and seek Him with our whole hearts? That's what we need to do. That's righteousness. Righteousness, a dependent on Jesus Christ, not on the government or some misguided cause. Righteousness is also staying true to our Christian convictions. Well, what are they, you might ask? Well, I'm glad you did. This is a big one. I have uh, seven for you. Number one, the Bible is the final authority for me and my family. 
Is that a conviction of yours? Or is it just a preference? Number two, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. Is that a conviction of yours? Or maybe just a preference? Number three, the only way to heaven is through, Jesus, through faith in Jesus Christ. Is that a conviction of yours? Or maybe there are other ways. Many roads to heaven, some people say. Number four, marriage is a lifelong commitment to God and my spouse. Is that a conviction of yours? I hope it is. Well, your marriage probably won't last. Number five, money is to be earned and managed according to scriptural principles. By the way, the, I have a book that's probably an inch thick. It has only to do with what the Bible says about finances. A lot. Number six, my lifestyle must be in line with Christian values. Is that a conviction of yours, or do you waver depending on the time we find ourselves in history? God does not change. Number seven, my children will be raised to believe all of the above. The other six. That must be a conviction of yours to raise your children in that way. So there you go. That's righteousness. Being right with God. Doing the right thing in the sight of God. Righteousness is also James 1.27. Talks about living. It says, pure and undefiled religion before God and the Father is this. To visit the orphans and the widows in their trouble and to keep oneself unspotted by the world. It's a good start, isn't it? Righteousness is helping the helpless. Do you do that? Or are we self-centered? Righteousness is showing compassion and mercy. Because, but for the grace of God, we are just as wicked as anyone we can point our finger at. Righteousness is doing good by praying for your enemies. Commanded by God to do that. Not only to pray for them, but to love them and to do good for them. Righteousness is showing others a better way of living. Amen. So America has the most admired heritage of any country in modern civilization. I believe that. And I guess I could prove that by simply saying that is why so many want to come here. Have we gotten off course? Absolutely. We need to see it and admit it and turn back to the God that raised us up in the first place. Our hope is in Jesus Christ. It always has been and always will be whether we want to admit it or not. That's, he is the only hope. That's it. He is the desire of the nations, the Bible calls him. He is the king of kings. The Bible calls him. He is the supreme creator of all. He is the rock of ages. He is the leader and commander of the people. He is the prince of peace. We need that. And therefore the psalm says that I read to you in the beginning. Psalm 2. Kiss the son. Lest he be angry and you perish in your way. When his wrath is kindled but for a little while. Blessed are those who put their trust in Him. Is there hope for the future of America? Well, some would say, no, I don't believe there's hope for America. I think we, they would say, I think we stepped over the line. I don't know. I don't believe that. We, like our founding fathers, can leave our children with a memorial they can build upon. That memorial would be our faith in Jesus Christ. That's what we need to get back to. There is hope as long as we have life and breath. And we need to have that same life and breath that raised up this country in the first place. Now right now, my daughter Jamie is going to sing a song that I, that's become my favorite. 
the song about America, but it was written by the Irish. I don't remember the man's name, but he from Ireland, written for America. Listen to this. It's entitled, O oh America. Wasn't that special? By the way, you can go online and, and the Celtic singers, the women singers will you know, share that as well. Oh, it's, it's just, it brings tears to your eyes. No question about it. But thank you, uh, Jamie, for singing that. Uh, let me pray a prayer and a, give a benediction. Father in heaven, we pray for our country. Oh, Lord, we thank you for the heritage. We, have, we thank you for the beginning of our country. Yes, we have sinned in many ways. Yes, we have made terrible mistakes. And we paid dearly for most all of them. But Lord, we know that you're a forgiving God. You forgive our sins. And you will heal, heal our land. 
if we only look to you. So all the foolishness that's going on in this world right now, and especially in this country, we pray, oh God, that you'll straighten these people out. We know that Satan's behind it. He's the author of confusion. Wherever he is, he brings confusion and division and anger and hatred and all that we read about in the evening news. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, not against one another, but against powers and principalities and spiritual wickedness and high places. Oh God, we know Satan must be defeated, and he will be. But even now, we pray that you would bind his powers and bring back level-headedness, clear thinking, righteousness to our nation again. We ask this in Jesus' name. And now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with all of you right now, through the week, and forevermore. Amen.